The second graphic novel is The Truth About Stacy, which is weird because that's the third Babysitter's Club book. Why did they skip over Claudia and the phantom phone calls? Argofunk book review, Argofunk book review. At a Babysitter's Club meeting, Stacy ignores everyone else to do her favorite thing in the world. Think about New York City. These aren't happy thoughts. She remembers last year when she collapsed in school. She was diagnosed with diabetes, and everyone stopped talking to her, even her best friend, Lane Cummings. Her parents have been super overprotective ever since. So her life is kind of terrible. That's the sad truth about Stacy. The Babysitter's Club has some new competition. Two older girls named Liz Lewis and Michelle Patterson are starting the Babysitter's Agency. Liz and Michelle are bad girls who sass teachers and hang around the mall. Middle schoolers hanging around the mall? That's obviously bad news. The agency works just like the Babysitter's Club, with two improvements. First, you can call them whenever you want, not just during a half-hour window in the middle of dinner time. Second, all of their sitters are teenagers who can stay out late. That's good, because it's kind of awkward when the 12-year-old BSC members babysit 11-year-old Mallory Bike. Stacy's parents announced they're going to take her to a new miracle doctor named Dr. Barnes. He comes highly recommended. Uncle Eric saw him on a TV show once. Stacy's upset that her parents are going to ruin her life again. She doesn't want to miss three days of school to meet some quack. She's perfectly fine with her normal doctor, thank you very much. As punishment for screwing up, Uncle Eric will never be mentioned again in the Babysitter's Club series. Christy comes up with several ideas for improving the Babysitter's Club, like cutting prices. We might not be the best, but at least we're cheap. She suggests doing housework, which won't happen until book 94. There's also the idea of having their older siblings join the club. Interesting! Let's be honest, though, if Sam joined the Babysitter's Club, he and Stacy would flirt nonstop during meetings. Claudia shoots down the older sibling idea because she refuses to give her jobs away to Janine. The BSC makes kid kits, which are basically boxes of toys for kids to play with. They also provide special deals for their best customers, like the Newtons. Sadly, this plan doesn't generate any more business. Quite the opposite, when Mrs. Newton gives birth to a baby girl, she decides she wants an older sitter, so she switches to the agency. How could you betray the BSC like that, Mrs. Newton? Stacy babysits her favorite kid, Charlotte Johansson. Charlotte is smart, but all the other kids at school hate her. They tease her for being a teacher's pet. Stacy sympathizes because all of her friends in New York abandoned her. Stacy's upset when her parents changed the three day examination to five days. Why are they making big decisions about her body? without consulting her first. Stacy worries that Dr. Barnes will force her to switch schools, so she enlists the help of Dr. Johansson, one of the few adults in town who's not totally incompetent. Dr. J gets Stacy an appointment with the exclusive Dr. Graham. The Babysitter's Club advertises by wearing giant cardboard signs. It doesn't work, but Stacy gets some love. Pete Black asks her to the snowflake dance. Wow! Who's Pete Black? Christy gets two older girls named Janet and Leslie to join the Babysitter's Club. They wear all black and hardly ever talk. As it turns out, they're secretly members of the agency sent to sabotage them. They purposely take jobs and don't show up just to make the Babysitter's Club look bad. Those foul villains! The neighborhood kids hate their new babysitters. Jamie Newton complains all they do is watch TV and talk on the phone. Charlotte thinks they only care about money and they don't treat her like a friend. So eventually the agency is going to go out of business when the kids complain to their parents about how awful they are. Our heroes get a perfect opportunity to tattle on the agency when they see Jamie Newton outside in the snow without a coat. He almost gets hit by a car. When they tell Mrs. Newton she agrees to stop using the agency, she warns all of her mom friends in town, and the agency immediately goes out of business. 
Wow, who knew Mrs. Newton had that much power in Stony Brook? Remind me never to mess with her. The girls have a showdown with Liz and Michelle, where they recite trivia about the kids. What is Jamie's favorite type of sandwich? Which kid is allergic to chocolate? What is Charlotte's favorite book? Liz and Michelle don't know any of the answers. The BSC is happy because this proves they're the better sitters. Liz and Michelle think it just proves they're weirdos. Stacy and her parents go to New York for her doctor's appointments. Her parents are impressed by Dr. Graham, who convinces them Stacy is fine the way she is and she doesn't need any changes to her life. Stacy is relieved when they finally agree to stop interfering with her diabetes. Stacy's parents force her to hang out with Lane. They're mean to each other at first, but they talk it out and become best friends again. Stacy promises to make Lane an honorary member of the Babysitter's Club if she ever visits Connecticut. Which is kind of funny, because when Lane does visit Connecticut, she's a total jerk. The end. Post-book follow-up. I think this book focused too much on the Babysitter's Club complaining and making plans, not enough doing things. Most of their complaints were split up over multiple scenes, which made it seem like they were complaining more than they actually were. Janet and Leslie were good villains, to the point where they overshadowed the real villains, Liz and Michelle. We don't really see Liz and Michelle until the big showdown at the end. It would have worked way better if the main villains had appeared at the start of the book. I don't understand why the agency has to close because one of their sitters was bad. They should be able to fire the bad sitter and keep the business going. We know not all of their sitters were bad because Mrs. Newton keeps one for a continuing basis. Really, all the agency needs is better screening procedures. The title storyline of Stacy's Diabetes was the worst story of the book. I preferred her fight with Lane and her friendship with Charlotte. The color version of this book makes Stony Brook a diverse town with many people of color. This contradicts Book 14, where it's confirmed there are no black people in town before the Ramses move in. The color version gives Charlotte Johansson the same darker skin tone that Claudia has, whereas the black and white edition had Charlotte and Stacy with the exact same skin tone, which makes sense as they are mistaken for sisters at one point. Overall, it was a good book, but I didn't like it as much as the previous one. I like how it had lots of different storylines, although as I pointed out, some of the storylines have room for improvement. I give Babysitter's Club graphic novel number two, The Truth About Stacy, a 7 out of 10.